Welcome back to our chapter six discussion on inventory and cost of goods sold. We are now going to move our attention to gross profit and computing that gross profit margin and the percentage of complete of um, inventory turnover. So you should definitely have this formula in your Excel template. We know that sales minus cost of goods sold equals gross profit. You should already have that from previous discussions in your income statement and a format for that. You should also have our gross sales minus returns and allowances, sales return and allowances and sales discounts. You should have that as your net sales and then this would be net sales minus cost of goods sold equals your gross profit. So this is basically the markup stated as a percentage of sales is our gross profit percentage and this is very heavily uh, monitored by not only employees and managers but investors because obviously we want our gross profit to be as high as possible. So the inventory turnover, which is also another item you should have in Excel, cost of goods sold divided by your average inventory. And remember in Excel, if you click equals average for the formula, and in the function you add the, you link it to the beginning balance and the ending balance of um, inventory, you can get this portion of the denominator pretty much solved for you. So it's two easy steps. So check out the average formula in Excel. And what this ratio tells you is how your cost of goods sold to average inventory. So it tells us how quickly we're selling inventory. Different industries have different metrics. So um, let's go ahead and start calculating some of these. So if we're looking at Coca-Cola and if we had 35, 376 million in sales, then our cost of goods sold totals 15,437. At the end of 2013, the inventory was 1.6 million. And basically they ended um, 2014 with inventory of 1908. So now if we're looking for our gross profit percentage, we basically take our sales minus our cost of goods sold. So we have here our sales minus our cost of goods sold of 15,437. And then our net sales revenue is the same 36, 35,376 to give us 56.4, which is excellent. I would say anything 30 to 50% is about average, so anything above that is really oh, just wonderful because that means 56 cents out of every dollar is able to pay other expenses, is not, parsed, not part of producing that item, which is phenomenal. Now for inventory turnover using the same information, now we know our cost of goods sold that was given to us, and then we know the beginning and ending balance. So here we have the beginning balance, and then here we have the ending balance, and when we divide by two, we get 8.6 times. So basically if we take 365 and divide it by the 8.6, we get 42 days, so it seems like an average inventory item stays in inventory 42 to 43 days. Now we want to talk about the cost of goods sold in making decisions. So this is, again, should be in your Excel. Notice we have beginning inventory plus purchases equals the goods available for sale. And if we subtract the ending inventory, we get cost of goods sold. Doing this in the form of a T account is, which we did earlier, inventory. We have beginning balance plus our purchases. And remember, we went through purchases that we can add freight in. We have to reduce it by purchase discounts and returns and allowances. So these items here give us our goods available for sale. We know that our cost of goods sold comes out of inventory, so then we get the ending balance. So here is your formula way, and here is your T account way of actually getting the information. So cost of goods sold is used by all companies, and it doesn't matter what system, so it's not like perpetual or periodic. You need to display your cost of goods sold. So um, if we rearrange that formula, and we have cost of goods sold adding our ending inventory, costs of goods available as planned, and beginning inventory, so then we know how much we have to purchase for the upcoming period. So this is also a good formula to have. All it does is take the previous information and allows us to use it more as a forecasting tool. So we know that we sold 6,000 and we know that we have 1,500 um, is planned. So then we know what we can pretty much solve for the rest. And this is easy, right? Because remember your beginning balance in one year becomes, I'm sorry, your ending balance in one year 
becomes your beginning balance in the next, right? Or in one month. So when you're estimating inventory, we call that the gross margin method. And um, it's very extensively used. And so what you see here is it shows you the calculations for it. So we have the beginning inventory plus our purchases equals our goods available for sale. And then we estimate, right? So if we say we have this amount of net sales revenue and we're assuming a 35% gross profit, then we know our cost of goods sold is going to be 65. And then we have an estimated cost of the um, net of the ending inventory lost. So just another way, these are all decision-making tools extensively used in industry. So let's start and figure out. So how much is in an ending inventory is what we're looking for here. And beginning inventory is 70,000. Net purchases total 365. And then we have normal gross profit. And we have net sales and normal gross profit. So very easy beginning inventory we got. Net purchases they told us was 365, so that's fine. We get here goods available for sale. All you do is take this plus that and you get the 435. And then we need to figure out our cost of um, our gross profit, right? Estimated cost of goods sold. So we have the gross profit percent. So we add that here and then we have to multiply that by our net sales. So now our cost of goods sold is 300,000. Then we have our ending inventory. So with this information, we know net sales is 500,000 and now we have our estimated cost of goods sold of 300,000 and we know this is 200,000 because and that should be about a 40 40 that is 40% of our net sales which is our gross profit. And our last learning objective for the inventory and cost of goods sold is you want to analyze the effects of inventory error. The easiest way to go about answering these questions um, on your exam is use numbers. So if we have an error in ending inventory, that creates errors for two accounting periods, right? Because as I told you, your ending balance goes forward into your beginning balance. So if the error is in here, that error is coming into the next period. So inventory errors can counterbalance in the two consecutive periods. And then beginning an inventory, they have uh, opposite effects on the cost of goods sold. So beginning inventory is added, obviously an ending inventory is subtracted. So if you put something in effect like this, you can see how the um, errors work. So in this case, it's if we overstated it by 10,000, right? So here we have our ending inventory was 20,000, but we overstated it, it really should be 10,000. Then when we do that, we see that that's a, a dilemma, right? Our gross profit is greater when we overstate it and then when it should truly be. So when we correct it, we should be to the right piece. But you see how this is a hundred thousand, which will kind of self-correct in period three. And then this is a very good item. You see how it's happening and that's exactly what we state. If ending in inventory is overstated, then that means our cost of goods sold is understated. And usually if ending inventory is overstated, our gross profit is overstated. So you may wanna read through this and make sure that you understand. But again, I would use numbers because it just helps you greatly as we saw in this example here.